What it do? Thank y'all for continuing. Uh, tuning in to the 38114 show. Uh, the newer episodes will be on the new layout. You see we got the futon right here. So who coming to sit on the couch with comedian Ambrose Jones next, y'all? Man, this would all be, wouldn't be possible, man, if y'all wouldn't continue uh, purchasing the merch. We got new merch in. We got 38114 show hoodies. We got, uh, we got those available in uh, black, you know, with the 38114 show logo. And on the back, you got the scan me card on it. That way it'll go straight to the website, somebody behind you, and they scan it. We got those available in white, and we got them available in black. This is the white, icy white honey bun, you know, from sizes to small to 4X. You know what I'm saying? Make sure y'all go to the website, 3811 Show. Get y'all one, you know. We also got 3811 Show masks available on the website. We got those available in blue, gold, and white. You know what I'm saying? You need your mask when you go out because you can't go in the store without a mask. That way you ain't got to look on the ground and pick nobody else's mask up. You already have a 3811 Fusho gent in your pocket. You know what I'm saying? 3811Fusho.com. Get your mask and hoodies. And uh, this is the number one seller here, uh, Immortal Herbs. Sea moss and bladder rack tincture. That's right. Sea moss contains 92 of 101 minerals that your body needs. Bladder rack contains the other nine. Y'all can go to comedianambrose.com and get these. Available in one ounce and two ounce tincture bottles, man. Boost your immune system, aids in weight loss, and also... Boost your libido, you know what I'm saying? I haven't taken no vaccine because I know my immune system good with these. It's my number one seller right there, man. Sea moss and bladder rack herbs. Immortal herbs. Immortal means Ambrose, by the way. Immortal means Ambrose. Ambrose means immortal. Uh, two of my customers said that other members of their house has caught COVID except them because they have been taking my products. So that was very, uh, that was a very proud moment right there. So y'all can get those available on my website, comedian Ambrose Jones. Thank y'all for tuning in. We got new episodes coming with more influential, positive, funny people right here on the 3811 Fuss Show. Make sure y'all hit that like and subscribe button. I'm Comedian Ambrose. I'm out. Hey, uh, this is the uh, 3811 Fuss Show. This is the uh, goddamn newest episode with the newest layout. I was kind of skeptical about it, but hey, hey it, man, this, this is gonna a work strong out. <laughs> Shout out to whatever furniture store this came Walmart, from. Walmart, I believe. It is a fat man's proof <laughs> furniture piece. I Look, thought it was gonna tip up when I got on the edge Look, of myself. Each leg come with two screws, but then it was four security screws. You got to get a drill to put in each four of them. And I was like, I was gonna leave them out, but and I was four like, screws that like, no, Ooh. let me go. <laughs> two screws going. <laughs> but I think when we mentioned the vets, as far as um, Tyler Craig, R.I.P., Lou right. Nell, Steve Brown, Earthquake, uh, good uh, names, uh, good names. Damon Williams, um, uh, uh, the the not 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 Carlos, that's them young. We talking about oh, and Steve Brown, Rodney Perry. This is a guy that you also have to put. In them goddamn realm of names. Hey, thank it's you. It's goddamn man. Ronnie Jordan, my, man. My nigga, appreciate Campus you. Campus Roger Tour. Yeah, man. Back on the back on the colleges post COVID. You are the with man, the mask. You are the are you the only comedian that really started that college college thing and just took it to a whole new level? Like that's where you eat at. That's that, your yeah, shit. Yeah. Well, before before the world closed up, yes for sure. But um, I was. It was like a few of us. It was like Roy Wood Jr. would be over there, Lonnie Love. Uh, but when I was, you know, I first started probably like 07, 06, and I was just went really hard. And I would figure it out. You, because comedians were scared of the colleges just because of the language or whatever. You right. Just don't cuss in the showcase. And at school, you probably can do what you want to. You ask them. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, but that's how I've been sustaining, man, uh, colleges, dog, like for years. I just won a NACA Legends Award. How many years have you been doing the college, sir? Since, oh, shit. My first college ever was 2003. It was at Central State. Hey, y'all, let's give it up for Mr. Ronnie Jordan, y'all. Hey, hey, we're here. Goddamn Mr. Ronnie Jordan. Get this guy right. got the college game on lock. First time I saw you, I think I was early on in my career, Rose Theater here in Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, I was dating a girl. She had tickets. She was like, you want tickets to this comedy show? I'm like, yeah, it was you. And I don't know who else. And man, I remember I, I watched you. That's when you had the fat nigga at the door. Oh, I was on. I was on. The yeah. fat nigga at the door. <laughs> Was it when you were? When you was it? Man, I don't know. Did it? I have a suit on? Oh you know, nine, I think. Oh nine. Okay, nine, a theater show. Memphis. Oh nine. That Rose Theater at University of Memphis campus, bro. 
Was that with Joe Claire and, and, and uh, believe, Dion Cole? I believe so. Yes. You know that show? Yes, yes, nigga. I yes. tell people about that show and yes. niggas don't remember it. Like, yes, Dion Cole and Joe Claire. I was gonna mention your name, but I did remember. So look, but that yes. was the show. I got there and I saw like I'm like, he my OG. What, what's going on? Yeah. And they were like, blood, you gotta go last, young blood. I'm like, what you talking about, y'all? Did? He like, man, they ain't pay us like that. <laughs> oh, for real? So it was like, another, <laughs> another promoter put them in school but me. I got my real whatever I was supposed to get, and they were like, this is just a pull-up, you know. Yeah. I think De- that might have been Dion. I don't probably did Dion Cole last two colleges the last before oh, he was on on. Like Dion was like, like Conan texting him while he was over there with us. Damn. And, oh, he was that bullshit. Yeah, they were like, go, they okay. just went up there to get their money. This is, you know how sometimes comedians get to the age where you kind of age out of colleges or you feel like you age out of colleges. Mm-hmm. It's, it's all it's all psychological, but they were like, yo, you got to I had to go after that. I was so nervous. But I remember I told that thing. Man, you really I had that a good time. time. I remember that show. So that probably was a good time you went last. I, yeah, that I was, probably was the best that you went I last. I was at, that was like the peak. I was like off of like 10 schools in a row. I was just like. So you in the zone. I was like, nigga, I don't care when it is. Just I want to go up. What's up? Man, I remember that show vividly, bro. And I remember fast forward a couple of years ago, I walk into Chuckles. And uh, I walk in, you was right there at the at the table sitting. You said, "What's up, Am bro?" I'm, I said, "What's up?" But in my head, I'm looking like, "Damn, this nigga know who I am." Yeah, bro, we was. This uh, is Mr. Kevin's royalty. I'm like, <laughs> "This nigga know who we, I am." Real, real comedians know who who wreck and shot who. Who tear stuff? I think I was with my boy Kazel. Shout out to Kazel. Yeah, Kazel. Kazel, man, that dude is funny. But I remember like just co- pulling up at his house, and he like, man, come on over here. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Sometimes you know you take shows, and you know you just do it just to kind of get known in the club or something. I'm, yeah. I'm pulling up, and Kazel booked me a couple shows here there. But I think I was doing something else, and I I was just in town. I think I came to see like Faison and Lil Rail was together. And you stopped through Chuckers. Pulled up at Chuckles, Man. you know what I'm saying? So yeah. I always, you know, you got to go where the, where the laugh's at, yeah, you know yeah, what I'm yeah. saying? Comedians, we a big fraternity, man. You got to pull up So where you know, house. where you where you familiar you from, uh, with me from? Well, I don't know. I, I, don't, I think in the club. Video, I think so, I think um, yeah. one of Cassell rooms or something, mm-hmm. like we was, I had been coming up here doing shit, and I, I'm, I'm, I just remember you were dressed, always dressed to the T. Yeah. But it was funny, it was, <laughs> you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like. It's hard to forget funny. I might not remember the exact joke, joke but I remember. But funny. Yeah, you know who trash and you know who funny. You know who funny. You be like, you know what? That nigga funny, the motherfucker, right? Because I, I make it a point to tell new comics or younger comics than me that you funny. Because I used to remember how much that means. Like with an old comic, like I see you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You like, oh man, man. thanks. Just <laughs> you know? to see y'all when we was just starting now. And then we run to y'all later on. Y'all know who up. Make, that make us feel like, oh, shit, okay, I'm doing something then. Man, we all black running the <laughs> business, man. We, we be proud of each other because that, like, barbers, comedians, we kind of all, like, all the same kind of hustler. Barber, yeah. comedians, man. hairdressers. It's like a black community thing. Black entertainers relate to, like, service workers. They looking for like the next it. head. We looking for the next gig. Same shit. Same <laughs> as strippers, too. Same. Strippers, too. Yeah. Stri- shout out to the dancers. Hey, shout, shout out to the dancers. Love, we, we love y'all. We I know do. stripper vagina air keeps you immune <laughs> from the COVID. <laughs> Atlanta did the research already. Yeah. We'll be fine. I'm going to have plenty of COVID tests. Yeah. Magic all City, got y'all taken care of. Man, Magic City, pin up all that, bro. Appreciate that. that. <laughs> so, right in there, I mean, goddamn. Right, so, uh, goddamn, running. <laughs> what, uh, so what year did you start and what got you into stand up, bro? The year I started comedy was 2001. Damn. I was in college, just broke up with my first little. What college? That'll uh, do it. A yeah, breakup will man, do it. A breakup every will time. do it. A breakup will send you to that stage. I broke over Trauma. to his mama. Yeah. Trauma, yeah, yeah, yeah. Trauma scene to stage. <laughs> we were all hurt babies. We were all big hurt kids. Yeah. But uh, uh, I think it was my first year in college. I uh, broke up with this girl. You know how when that first piece, that raw on the regular. Oh, the raw hurt your feelings. And then, and oh. then you, the one you had done chase for a minute, and then y'all was a really good couple. And you was like, nigga, I'm straight, man. man. Yeah, bro, it was it was bad. And then and then my homeboy, I was we was living in an apartment. I was just in the room in the bed, just. I, but I was writing jokes, and I'd be going to sleep. I'd be writing jokes, go to sleep. He's like, man, you gotta get your ass up, man. We going to the club, we doing something. Yeah. And I was like, I want to go to an open mic. <laughs> you know what, what you I'm was saying? writing jokes for? Where you get the right? I jokes? just always was like right now funny shit. I don't know why. I was just like, that's funny. I think I'm a. I, I, in my mind, subconsciously, I probably was going okay. to try to okay. do comedy at some point. But you were just right. And yeah, at that point, I was like, fuck it. Let me, I got to be something now. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's something about a girl, a woman 
that it make you like, all right, yeah, I'm going to show you. First piece of raw raw. I'm going to show you. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you man. say, so you the one say, I got to go to open mic. Let's go to open mic. I went to open mic, um, went there. My boy Viz took me. Uh, first comic got on stage. Uh, he did his thing. No, first I went to watch it. That's what happened. I went to watch it, and then I still went back to my room, and I was like. Let's watch it. I went to watch a show. I oh, went oh. to watch a show oh, live. I went to watch it. I know the name of it. Sorry, I went to watch a show live, <laughs> and uh, Big Kenny was hosting. Okay. And everybody was terrible. And I said, I think I want to do that. He said, I know you can do better than these motherfuckers. Yeah. He ain't never seen me go up, and I never went up. I was talking to Big Kenny, the, one of the comedians. And then I went up there the next week, and I did really good. I, I, I went up there, and I ain't have no joke. I forgot all my jokes when I got up there. Yeah. And I start roasting this dude that was right here. Mm -hmm. That always just works. roasting his shirt, just you know. But I, I I learned how to roast without. If you grow up, like you go to a black school, HBCUs, any hood area, you know. Some people know how to roast without getting murdered, without getting beat up. Yeah, yeah. yeah comedians, we yeah. we gotta we have to, we have the ability to roast the killers in the neighborhood. Uh, right? Yeah, and, and they shake your hand afterwards. <laughs> so I start roasting this cat. <laughs> Everybody died, and then it was like Harry Welch came. Harry Welch was hosting. And they said, Man, comedians roast the comedians. And I was like, oh, was And the dude was a comedian, and he roasted Damn. me the whole Who was that? Who was it? Was a, uh, his name was Tamir. Okay, I remember Tamir. Tamir. Red, yeah. red, red dude. Oh, uh, not Tamir. Oh, Tamir. Not Tamir. Tamir, Tamir okay. from Atlanta. He, he, Man, when I tell you, he roasted me his whole 30 minutes, and then, like, even when it got off of me, He'd be like, ain't that right, fat boy? <laughs> <laughs> so what college you went to, man? I went to Fort Valley State first, and then I transferred and went to West Georgia, University of West Georgia. Okay. Yep. So this is always in Atlanta. Born and raised in Atlanta? I was born in Birmingham. Bro, get born the in fuck Birmingham, out of here. Moved to Atlanta when I was like one or two. For real? Yeah, my mom's from like Auburn Avenue. Like, so you country boy. That's where that weight comes from. That's yes, where that weight comes from. My dad's from. a chef. Everything has got a... Pig ass in it. With Your the, dad is a chef? My dad's a chef my whole life. Always had a catering company. Always worked at a nice restaurant. This nigga, hey, taste this. Yeah, taste, delicious taste items Ooh, were not a problem. Nigga, if I had a chef <laughs> in my family, nigga. Come on, man. Oh, my God. <laughs> so you yeah. know how to cook too, then, huh? Yeah, I was working in a restaurant when I was started comedy, man. I, I, uh, when I, so when I started comedy, I was in college, driving back and forth from college to the comedy club, and I was working. So I was on academic probation, so I wasn't in class. So I would go to work, come home, change, go all the way to the comic club, which was an hour and a half, mm -hmm. in an 83 Monte Carlo with the dent in the door. Two door? Two door, 83 Monte mm. Carlo. And uh, I would go to the comic club and just either go up or go or watch and come on all the way back to campus because my, my apartment was on campus. But uh, What club? Uh, Uptown, Uptown Comedy Corner. It was that's the old, the, the old, old one on Peachtree. Peachtree, man. Mm -hmm. It was hey. like Justin's was in the parking lot. That's where I met Ti. That's where I met Big Meech. And a lot of comedians Jeezy. used to be scared to do. Yeah, that's what. But that's that what used happened. to be one of my favorite spots. That's what happened. Like <laughs> it's Sunday night, shout out to Nard hosting. Eighty comedians finna go up before you a feature. You a feature at? You going up on Sunday night? You ain't going up to about 10, 30, 11 o'clock. Yeah, it's be because it's open mic. But they, but it, it, it's easier now. Like, you came after they was, you know, the PC, Me Too. Not Me Too, but kind of, they boo, but it ain't like it used to be. It okay. used to be, they get you up. They, people be scared to get on the list. Mm -hmm. And I, I started doing good on that Sunday night, on the on the rough night, on the okay. boo night. On the boo night, I was killing. That's what make you strong. Yeah, and then they started having me, they used to have to, they used to save me for after if the headliner get booed. Yeah. Like, <laughs> they, damn, they, for they, real? Yeah, they, it was that bad. It was like, this headliner might not get booed. You chill out. You finna watch him go up and see. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And then my, he might still put me up after the headline. They ain't give a fuck. They used to do what they want to on Sunday, so. Okay, so you started off You started off getting that last spot in case the headliner bump. That's a yeah, strong, I, I, that mean they got confidence. Ronnie Jordan gonna rip it yeah, up no I matter even, what. I got on comedy review after about six, seven months of comedy. Oh, for real? Yeah, I was in the car with uh, Hurricane Andrew. Uh, he was getting booked for Comic View. And uh, he said, I got the next dude with me. If y'all don't book him, y'all crazy. Mm -hmm. And then he was he selling it, right? So I'm riding like, oh, shit. He, they had me the phone, booked me a date in Miami, Comic View. Who he had to go to? Who, who he put you on the phone with and said, hey? Whoever, he, whoever was calling to book his date, mm -hmm. and he was like, I got the next dude right here with me. Y'all need to book him. If you don't book him, you're going to be stupid. Like, he was... There's always love for Hurricane Andrew. Dude. Always love he's still for, around. Yeah, yeah, he's still yeah, around. He do a lot of rooms and stuff. But I, I just that's what made me like love comedians because we like a frat. Like I ain't pledge in college, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? But 
this feel like like a frat. It's you know a better saying? frat. Like my car, my car, they, they was out of rental cars at the spot. I hit Ambrose immediately. On Instagram. I'm talking about fast. I got a ride to my show. Got some food. I got ribs and weed <laughs> and within an hour. It was because Cassell do that. Cassell yeah. pulls up. Cassell pull up himself. He might have a barbecue with him. Come on. Well, you know, smoke. it all depends who it is. Right, right, right. It depends on who it is. Right, right. Who hit you up? Uh, but yeah, I, I Ambrose on, had Seamoth <laughs> with him and healthy shit. <laughs> I, was on, I was on Facebook posting one of my videos. I said, Instagram, hey, Ambrose, made the message. Got to Got to go to UT Martin. Can't get no rental car. Hit me up. I need a ride. I hit him. I say, Ron and Jordan, I hit you up. Instantly. Yeah, he was finna, he was finna, this is niece for, for me. I, <laughs> I was like, hey, man, you know what? It's my niece's birthday. Hey, man, forget her, man. I'll take her tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, you got to do this with your niece. I'm glad the pandemic got me. I, I spend more time with my kids now, man, because we was out crazy. I don't know. Before the pandemic, we was running around like traveling strippers, bro. Well, then, I promise then, you. That shit hurt, though. It, it taught us a lot, but it still hurt because oh. I know you lost on a lot of money. Oh boy, we talking. And then you can't perform, you can't do what you love to do. So, so they, you at home having you with your kid, but you still like. Hey. And it's like, and on top of that, it's <laughs> this thing called COVID out there killing fat people. Oh shit! <laughs> it was, it was. You got, I know you got joke about that. It was only yeah. knocking fat people out. We was like, what the fuck, bro? They trying to get rid of us. Look, I wasn't worried. It was, yeah, I you wasn't was straight. worried I was, at all. Tyler just walking around no mask. Yeah, just, he been he been doing right the whole time. He been eating right. You know what I'm saying? That's why I was surprised he died. I'm like Tyler used to teach us about eating good and man. Yeah, he still do. He still eat right, and you know what I'm saying. But, oh, you say Tyler Chronicle. Oh yeah, you talking about Tyler, Tyler Craig? Craig. Tyler Craig. Yeah, he yeah. did used to be like you need yeah. some fish, Ronnie. Right? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Get you some fish. Rest in peace, Tyler Craig. Too. That's one of the that's one of the hard ones that, that right. happened during COVID. But yeah. it kind of took my heart away. You seen his funeral online? I oh, was there. Rip. I didn't. I was. I, I, I couldn't was go. There, nigga. Shout to Dirty South. I want my funeral that way. It was lit. I want all my comedians that I wanted to be a comedy show. Oh my god. Yeah. Look, shouty, shouty went up there and he was the first one. Blaze that motherfucker. Then uh, I think Special K got up there later on and said, "Hey, shout it, shout it. That's the best ten minutes I ever seen you do, <laughs> <laughs> nigga. Everybody. Oh my god, but Hilarious. shout out to shout it, shout it, man. Dirty hey. South had the best response I ever seen. Al Tuma, boy. Shout out to Al. So Al Tuma's a promoter. <laughs> if you gonna say Janky promoter, you he's he kind of like, but he's like an upstanding. <laughs> It ain't the, it ain't the, he's not going to have your money. It's the way you're going to be performing. Ooh. I done performed at like halls and stuff with mm-hmm. Al Tuma, but it'd be like Sandersville, Georgia. It'd be like making a, a VFW, but he got your money and yeah. it's going to be packed. But I guess other people had bad experiences with him. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So he up there giving this shot. Because him, Al and Tyler used to run around. Like he used to book the they shit out of Tyler. Yeah, 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 it was yeah, real yeah. close, dirty. And, and, and dirty came, came up after Al and she said, yeah, Al talking about that time. When him and Tyler was together. Well, what about that time yeah, you didn't have, have money. our money? But Ooh. what's so funny about that? The whole time before that, Dirty South is in the back with the big, the big mask on, with a boyfriend breaking down, crying the whole Mike, time. Soon she get on stage, snap right out of. That's a real comedian, man. Dirty South is one of the most underrated she, comedians in the world. Bro, my boy, uh, damn, uh, Fredo Foodstyle, he had me perform. Well, I mean, that's my girl, man. I love her. Yeah, you man. know, because, you know, addiction and all this other stuff happens, but when somebody talent can shine through all, all of this that, shit, oh my gosh, she's so hilarious. Dog, dog, Dirty South had a joke one time. It was so, like, she got heart with it. It's like, it's like, oh, it be the saddest shit, but it make you think it is funny. Yeah. She said, she said she saw these two little boys at the doctor's office, and one of them was like, "What you want to be when you grow up?" He was like a fireman or some kind of regular answer. Shit. What the other little boy said, "What you want to be?" He was like, "A pit bull." <laughs> he like, why? So my dad can take me to the park on Sunday, <laughs> nigga. Nigga, when I tell you, oh my God, that's bro, classic. It was the funniest shit. That's that shit, and I heard her do that probably ten years ago, maybe only one time. Man, you know that's what I'm Somebody can take that now and do it. My nigga, be that was like motherfucker. that is the saddest, most truthful <laughs> shit. And niggas will take their dog to the park and Man, the car on Sunday. 
Hey, we'll go get that kid. Man, that's so true. Shout out man. to the dudes who are taking care of your kids, man. There, hey, there go my son, Shad, over there. His son is in here. He, he got man, child he support. Man, he got him with him. <laughs> I got him with me. See, child support? You got, <laughs> oh, see that son? You got to keep him with a temp fade and, and, and a hoodie and hey, um, Wi-Fi. Man, do you know the old Uptown, I think my first time doing it, Lester Bills had brought me the feature for him. Shout out to Lester Bills. And I went up there and did it. And Dirty South was one of the ones who came up to me. Hey, you. You funny, boy. Boy, you funny. Yeah, she was one of the ones that came up. She's to a me. great writer, bro. So, uh, Ronnie Jordan, man. Yes, sir. Six months, you got Comedy View. Who was the host? The host, when I got there, was Arnold SJ. Mm. And then when I saw the episode, they had switched it to Bruce Bruce. Okay. It was the one in Miami, remember? I oh, the, the Caliente. Out, yeah, I did yeah. Comedy View Caliente. This is how Atlanta and Young I was. I was like 22. I remember that. What you have? I, I, I had a I red mean. Braves jersey on. <laughs> throwback Braves jersey. I remember jersey. that. Number three, Del Murphy in the back. About mm-hmm. 10 wristbands. I had like a blue watch. Braves hat to the side. Them the ones his girlfriend that, that broke up with him gave him. And she got ah, out. Oh, that was man. a big ass one of them big ass Nike wristbands. <laughs> and then they told me I had to switch the logo on, so it was over. It was inside. But I think I had it on the side of I thought I was fly. I looked like a, a fat St. <laughs> lunatic. That, I looked like, yeah. I looked like a, a, a faint lunatic, a fat lunatic. Man, so uh, you ripped had, that, had, I ripped. Was I you had, nervous? Yes, because you was on there with a whole bunch of vets. But what they edited it. So when you tape Comic View, it's all day. It's like from 3 p.m. to probably 11 at night. So they just do it. They might do a whole show with 10 people, another whole show with 10 people. Different crowd. Maybe they maybe they roll the crowd from front to back or something. Okay. So niggas was getting booed when I went. Because this is Miami. They niggas is dressed. They, 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 it's like an event. Florida is kind of because they got different Boy, nationalities. Boy, when I tell you everybody on my show got booed, when I, when I tape, nobody I tape with, nobody I tape with can air we, with Can me. we say some names? I don't even remember. Oh, I, I, okay. This is how y'all got was. This is my first time on TV. Okay. I had, like, I think my very first joke, and niggas have stole this shit. I used to do it in Uptown. I found an old tape of me doing it in uh, Madison Square Garden, like, 03. And I was like, hey, man, I got my special guest with me tonight. And it was, and I was like, Whitney Houston. You had those mics there? <laughs> yeah, but I was doing it in Uptown, right? I, she had came to the club. Like, I was doing it, and they was like, don't do that shit. She gonna pull up and fucking buy this shit and put us out, nigga. For real? But, like... I had a bunch of Whitney Houston jokes because it was like right after she had came on BET. Remember she was on yeah, the, yeah, yeah. you better lay low. You better lay low. Man, I watched this old tape <laughs> of me now and it was, I was cringing like, ugh, because I had a Whitney Houston joke with a Bobby Brown joke and a Bobby Christina joke. Like, mm. boom, 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 they mm. all hit. And I was like, ugh. They all gone I now. ain't putting this uh, They all gone except Bobby now. I ain't putting this shit out. <laughs> R.I.P. Whitney <laughs> R.I.P. Whitney wanted to go. I met Whitney son, and Bobby. And his son gone. Yeah, yeah, and his son passed away. I bet you Bobby was like, shit, I should have stayed goddamn Man. single. Rest in peace to the to the, all the Houstons and stuff. This but. nigga hit and got married and went through some shit. <laughs> he was fine. He was like, it's my prerogative. Yeah. Do what I want to do. And that's what I, I think that's the set I did the Capri Sun joke. I was like, my mom going I'm going to tell me, uh, this girl going to tell me I need to grow up. I was like, uh, bitch, you don't tell me. I'm a grown-ass man, and I pull a caprice. I had a straw, yeah. and I pull it out and start drinking. <laughs> bitch, if you don't, <laughs> I'm, I'm still drinking the yeah. shit. And that shit used to kill at yeah. colleges. Bro. You I did used, that at, uh, at Memphis. At Memphis yeah, Rose that shit used Rose to kill at colleges. And I think I did a, uh, I, I don't remember, man. It was a, it was a fun time, but I, I ripped and nobody did good that day. Man. So what uh, after BET Comedy View? Come back home to Atlanta. What you what you came, get on after that? Came back home to Atlanta. Um, this contest comes up. Walter Latham, who uh, books the King of Comedy tour, <sighs> he's looking for the next King of Comedy. He does like a search, Nick, Kings and Queens of Comedy search, and then I get put on that. And it's like a reality show, and it, it had, they took twelve finalists from around the country. That. Was K Dub on? No, K Dub was he. Audi- me and him was in the finals together. We we went up in Atlanta, but he didn't make it to the show. Okay. So, uh, cause they used probably a couple people from every city, but it was a bunch of Chicago niggas made it. Anyway, it was a reality show. It was twelve comedians, and we went on tour with the Queens, and we opened for the Queens. Everybody got like two or three minutes before the show, and the crowd votes Apollo style. Who okay. Gets to stay. After the tour, the tour ended. It went from LA to LA to uh, to, to LA to Vegas to New Mexico to Texas. Oh wow! Uh, and then we came back. I think we took a break, and then we ended up like uh, Atlanta, Philly. We did a whole, we did a whole country. Don't and then too we many ended, people remember that. The last tour, the last day was in Madison Square Garden, and the winner got got twenty five thousand dollars and got to be the next king of comedy. So who was the winner? Me. I won it. And then uh won the twenty five G. Yeah. This nigga just gonna say, Yeah, I won all comedy. Nigga, yeah, yeah, it was it was a long it was 
Twenty, <laughs> nigga, you won. I nigga. won, and, but it was supposed to be a reality show, but it never came out. Okay, the, that's was, why. Okay, it was we the same never did year. It. it was the same year the last comic stand that first came out, and then they was the same company, Paramount. So they shelved ours. They put last comic out. So I'm at, I'm the king of comedy, allegedly, and I'm back home. You got the title, but you I got the title. That's why I got. That's, my first tattoo was a crown. And I got it where you can't see it. I got it where you can't see it. Since no. nobody saw the show, I was like, I'm gonna have to earn this shit. You know what I'm saying? So I just went back to grinding, <laughs> and uh, well, after, well, actually, after that tour, Walter was like, uh, he was like, they shelved the Paramount show, or whatever. But he was like, I got something. I'm doing something kind of like Def Jam, but different. And I was like, cool. And then he was trying to find somebody to partner with. This is before he even got Diddy involved. Okay. So me and Walter talk. He said, I got Diddy. You did Bad Boys of Comedy. I helped. I helped with the names of the comedians. I gave him every name in my phone when he was booking it. Oh, uh, hold on. Yeah. Before we talk about that contract, because I heard that contract was some bullshit. What, what? for Bad Boys of Comedy? Yeah. Who said that was kind of? Who said I heard that? everybody said that contract for the comedians was bullshit. I heard they paid in clothes. No, they paid us money. They paid us five hundred apiece. Well, that's where you can clear the room at. Okay, before that, when you won the twenty five G's and you who named, said they got paid in clothes only? We gon' we gon' get to that. I heard okay, cool. That. Go ahead, go ahead. When you got twenty five G's, this the king, new kings of comedy, and it didn't come in. How did that feel? It felt cool. I still was happy, but I I was just um. I came back home and, and went shopping a lot. Because <laughs> I want to let the people know how many heartbreaks that we go through. We always celebrate our victories, but... Yeah, it's like I'm the king of How many heartbreaks knows. do you it's, go through where shit oh, supposed was, to have, but it don't? And then it was like the whole... A lot of the comedians knew what was going on, so they was like... I was getting all this jealousy and resentment from dudes that I didn't even know. Mm -hmm. And then it was like, huh? Then I think uh, Who Got Jokes uh, coming to the stage came out and... And I was going to apply. And then I, I already got word that I couldn't even be in it. They was like, you, you can't because you with Walter. I was like, what the fuck does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> so well, shot. See how we look. Right. OK. All right. So I don't know how. It's just been rumors going around. Uh, they say the Puff Daddy. Uh, how many minutes are we on so far? They say the Puff Daddy was paying comedians and clothes. They wasn't paying them at Bad Boys to come. OK. They paid us. I got 500 bucks. I got paid twice, actually. Because I had to do you my. You was booking the comedians also. Did you get I didn't paid for book that? it. I didn't book it. I just gave him my numbers. He was like, "Who you think funny?" I was like, "So oh, you pretty much you booked the whole show." Yeah. Well, there's a lot of comedians that I didn't give him the number that he booked, but he was just wanting to know, like, even for season two, a lot of them cats was like the, the people I gave. I didn't even do season two. Okay. Walter wasn't even involved, but uh, I helped. You know, I just helped. I contributed, and then they hired me at the at the shoot day to write for Diddy. They were like, "Diddy need a writer." The writer that got is uh, he don't know what to do. They had this white boy that's supposed to be writing for him, and he was scared to death. Yeah. And and Diddy was saying the shit he's supposed to say on stage in the mirror, and I was like, nigga, write down what he's saying. Yeah. And I went in his dressing room, and he got, you see his tape. All that shit was buffet style from food. Sylvia's food, uh, <laughs> fucking mac and cheese, chicken, all the shit like at a repast. Everything mm -hmm. yeah. good. Then he had every pair of Jordans. Then he had every pair. Remember them Visa jeans with the shit. All these visa jeans. Yeah. Then he had all this shine shit. But it's a room this big. It's all the, I'm like, I'm just looking at the shoes like, what the fuck? He got the fours. <laughs> and then, so we basically wrote down what he said. They gave me another 500 for that. I think I got, I, I made about 1500 No, you got paid. I got about three checks off there. You don't there. know nobody else. No, everybody got 500 and then you got your, whatever your shine John shit was. But they had to get a bunch of Sean John shit for me because they, they didn't have the sizes in the yeah. thing, so they had to go buy it. They had the special made. No, they, have to... they had to call the fact, <laughs> hey, we got a special Nigga order. They had to give me Sean Jonathan. <laughs> I, I got the Sean Jonathan pack. We need a Sean They had to call Jonathan. the warehouse. <laughs> yeah, right, we, we yeah, need we... a little more carpet and, and, and drapes to put over this boy. <laughs> Sean Johnson, uh, okay. yeah. So comedians got paid 500 and then they got a couple of outfits also. You got a couple of outfits. You got some, S, I think they gave us S dots. I think Diddy had just bought the, you know, the, you know the clothing line Penguin with the, those nice like polo shirts, the older looking yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He had just bought that company. So okay. we had all this Penguin shit. I got the Penguin shoes. So I had clear a, that up. Comedians got paid 500 and a couple of outfits. Who said that, um... Maybe it was just a, a, a myth going around. You know how comedians I don't know what passing. season two did. Okay. Know. And then there's a lot of comedians that there was not on Bad Boys, and they went up there trying to get on. And they, okay. And okay. They, now they say they was on it, because they, you know what I'm saying? Because they didn't air. It's a lot of niggas that say they but was they on it. But they went up there. A lot of people, some people taped and didn't air, too. Okay. All right, cool. 
Maybe they're the ones that didn't get paid. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's clear that they did. Comedians did get paid for Puff Daddy's Bad Boy Comedy. Yeah, I went on a tour too after that. I went on the Bad Boys of Comedy tour. Then after the Com Bad Boys of Comedy tour. Uh, before that, I went on the. After the Kings of Comedy search, I went on the Comedy Soul Fest tour, which was Earth, Wind, and Fire, Ozzy Brothers, Bruce, Bruce, Adele, Earthquake. How long was you Ricky on that? Ricky Smiley. It was like 22 days. How you get on that? It was it was the next thing after the Kings of Comedy search. He was like, you know, the T. It ain't gonna. It, you're not gonna go on TV, but I got some shows for you. That's Latham. This is he Latham. came through. Me and Latham still talk today. Man, that's 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 big. Uh, man, yeah. I I'm familiar with Latham and uh, yeah, he, he produced the Kings of Comedy when he was 25 years old. He was like 20 something. And he, he put all them. He put everybody in the six seven figure category uh, before people were paying comedians like that. He was the first one to do. To put a bunch of comedians together and try to do like a, I don't think he was the first, but he he did the Georgia Dome first. He got the record mm. for the most people at a comedy show. So you on there with legends? You on there with Earthquake Adele? Shout out to my homegirl Adele from Chicago. Yeah, Earthquake Adele, Gibbons, Ricky, um, and I had to do two minutes every night, and then, but I would kick it with Bruce. Two, two minutes. Where, what slot? In the beginning? Very beginning. They they people coming in. It was two. It was me and Jeff B opening. Okay, Jeff and, B from Chi Town. Yes, sir. Uh, and uh, they paid me two grand a night for two minutes. Oh well. Yeah, that ain't, is that ain't, that's enough to get some jokes in. Hell yeah, I was so happy. You got narrowed down, you got chopped. But then I watched like the best concert I ever seen in my life. Like Verdi, I'm standing right here, Verdi White, right there every night. I used to stand right in production world and watch Earth Wind and Fire destroy and go home before nine o'clock. Them niggas would be off stage, broke down mm -hmm. in the bus, gone by nine every I'm night. Like, every night, that that contract. Day. Nine nine thirty, it ain't a trace of Earth Wind and Fire. And then the Ozzy Brothers is up, going up and. They had to fall. When I tell you, them nigga put the heat, but the verses made it more even. But okay. in, in real life, yeah, they kill. Yeah, because Earth Wind and Fire got all energy shit. Arena shit is energy. Mm -hmm. But Earth, but Ozzy Brothers got that smooth shit. By the time niggas drank some settle in and they cut with that girl, by the time Ron Ozzy come on there, it was dope. But Earth Wind and Fire got to be a close. <clears throat> got to be. They they, they in the, in the contract, they don't want to close. They want to get the fuck on. It's like a bunch of people in the band. Yeah, I feel you. So, yes, what year did you sign up for NACA and start this world famous campus royalty tour? Well, after Bad Boys aired uh, years later, we taped Bad Boys in 03. It came out in 05. Okay. So that shit came out, and uh, Tony, Tony Tone, his agent hit me. Memphis 10, legend, entertainer of the year, Tony Tone. Yeah, what's up? I just had him on the show. What's up? Yeah, Tony Tony used to do that, that Simpsons joke. Hey, he got Nigga. so many in front of you. But he, was, he killed NACA too, so he was killing NACA already. Okay. So his agent hit me. He said, man, this college agent said, man, he liked your set. He's like, all he's going to do is ask you, can you do that without cussing? And then just tell him, yeah. Then he called me. He said, can I submit you for bad, for NACA? And I didn't know what, I knew what it was because Gary always told me a couple years before. But then he was just like, uh, just do that without cussing at the showcase. But when you get to school, do what you want to. His name was Mike Pavlov, man. Appreciate Mike. We still cool to this day. Okay. Uh, and he's cool with my agent that I have now. They were all boys. So, um, yeah, man. Got into the neck where probably like 06. 06. And the first time I went to a showcase, I went to Mid-Atlantic. And the next, and um, I went to Mid-Atlantic like Friday. Then Saturday I had to drive up from Philly to um, like Boston, like Marlboro, Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. I booked 40 dates at one, at one note showcase. And then the next day I booked like 30. Man. This is like in two days. <laughs> so I booked like 70 days so, in two days. So you was touring with NACA. When did you brand it off yourself and like, I'm going a, I'm to a take this to the next level? You, and I I'm think, a, so NACA is just the the platform. NACA right. is the, like, basically like, it It looks like a dog show basically. It's like yeah. a, all the schools go to this one place and watch. It's like a convention. You just go watch people perform all weekend. You see Poets, jugglers, singers, they might have a dude that got oxygen bars. They might have a dude that got an outdoor maze. They got dudes that do drive-in movies. Mm -hmm. You just offer your services to shit to do on campus because okay. your activity fee come out anyway, and they got to spend it to entertain you at the school. So, okay. like, they might have ludicrous. At the biggest schools have a bigger budget. Like, that's why they have, like, ludicrous at University of Memphis right. or Tennessee. Like, the bigger... 85 home, South Show. The bigger budgets get the Shout bigger out acts. To so, South. yeah. But, yeah, man, I was uh, doing that. And that shit just worked out. So you did you brand that your own campus royalty? I, well, I, with my first tour, cause I tour ain't nothing but your dates already. Already, you just named and you it. just named. It. But you, you branded that though. That branded you first. That. My first tour was Big Man on Campus tour. I remember that. I was a Big Man that. on Campus. First of all, no, um, let me go back. My very first tour, it was called College Material Tour. 
remember that. And one. I had it like a Harley Davidson logo that said college, college material. And then the next one was Big Man on Campus. Then I've been doing Campus Royalty probably the past five years. Okay. I might change it to something else later on. I don't know. So you never did do too many clubs and nothing like I did that? A, I did a bunch. Of, so what happened was a couple of years ago, I just, I was doing the colleges, but I, the clubs wasn't kind of knowing who I was. So yeah. I, because uh, I was right before I got NACA, I was like moving into about to start headlining the, the improvs at Funny Bone. Like okay. I was featuring for a lot of people. I was going, remember they had the one-nighters and yeah, dating yeah, yeah, and stuff? Yeah, yeah, We called them nigga nights, you know. <laughs> Shout out to all the nigga comedy nights. clubs that had the we black nights. We still do those now. We still do those now, but That's those good. will be like a really packed night, and like they see if you can do good on there, they'll bring you on the weekends because, you know, black acts, you got to sell out before they even bring you sometimes. Mm -hmm. But uh, that's neither here nor there. But, uh, yeah, I was doing a couple clubs, but I fell all the way back from... The college dates, you know, because sometimes you're not the hottest one. So I kind of consciously fell back and went back in the clubs. But I, I, I was doing a smart plan. I was like, uh, I told uh, Tamara from uh, Innovative, like, let me, whoever headliner you got going out, let me just go with them. And whatever the money is, I'll make it up on merch. There you go. So she That's sent me out with, right there, yeah, she sent me out with Coco Brown, did a couple dates. Shout out to Coco. She sent me out with uh, Tony Roberts. And then I hit Bill Bellamy myself because he would have me open every time I, we, he pulled up in Atlanta. So he put me, I was the first, I'm the only big dude that ever been on the Ladies Night Out tour. So <laughs> the first big man. I'm the first big sex singer. Everybody else, work out. They go shoot ball in the morning. Ladies Night work Out, out tour. You the first ever. Hey, man, Ladies Night Out tour was dope. And I'm sti I still, they still uh, hit me up sometimes. No, so. dude, man, look, I, every time I, I'm somewhere, I'm either Memphis, Nashville. I'm either there doing the show. I go out to the, the hottest spot in the city. Guess who in that motherfucker? Bill Bellamy. Bill, Davey. What's up, nigga? Turn it up. Turn in that motherfucker. Turn it up. Bill Bellamy, turn up. Me and his birthday the same day. For April real? 7, yep. April 7th? Mine, May 7th, man. I'm a tired. Hey, Mine coming Shout up. Shout out to you. Birthday okay. is you. You coming. Your birthday before Mother's Day? Oh, yes, you ain't going to never get nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, man, so you been, man, it's just a blessing. You've been out here doing your thing, man. Yes, sir. We, you know, we're doing more than culture right now. we on the podcast. That's what we way. finna we, get to. We bought some ownership right now. You know what I'm saying? That's what I mean. You know Hold what I'm saying? I think this is your, your man's. This is Rob Love. Okay, that's his ride. Two hours and a Cool. So we about to wrap up in about a uh, shot. Check that battery life and check. I mean, we on about thirty minutes. So yeah. uh, more than culture podcast. More than culture. Had Tyler Chronicles on the show. His this episode. Our new, this is our new merch right here, man. This is the new. More That's than like culture. the Newport. That's an yeah, upside it's... down Newport symbol. Am I correct? Yes, sir. It's Nike it's, symbol. Yeah, it's not for squares. That's what it is. Not man. for squares. They it always is. got a, a, oh, some a cool message. merch. Oh, some cool. So more than culture. I just had Tyler Chronicles on here. Yes, Shout sir. Out to That's Tyler. Bro. Uh, 36 minutes, what the battery life looking like? We good? Uh, okay, so uh, where did Modern Culture? I like the, I like the ambiance of uh, Modern Culture. Yeah, Modern than Culture I, is Kamal, Secret Genius, uh, Remo Rod. They, were, they had a podcast together. Remo is, a, both of those guys, guys got production background. They, uh, Remo's been a bunch of movies, like Drumline and stuff like that. And okay. Kamal was doing photography, I think. He didn't want to do the voice at the end. Yeah, he has yeah. a good voice. He does um, the Secret Genius, Secret Genius Life Coach. Ladies and gentlemen. So, Remo and Kamal were doing the podcast. <laughs> they had their own studio. Okay. They were doing their podcast every Monday anyway, and uh, Tyler started going over there just to write, and then he was sitting in on there Mondays. So, I was just, yeah, you know, in the points of your career was doing like this, and I was just trying to be proactive, and I was just like, bro, let me just pull up on you and just write. And then we was coming up with shit, and we ended up getting bossed after being around each other. Like, I think I auditioned for it when he was there, but we was already locked in, and I got the Bossom Show, and we kind of picked it up and kind of uh, started doing the podcast probably like 2016, 2017, but I joined them just to do my own shows, really, because oh, I wasn't, I, I was getting mad that I would get booked for these clubs, and then they'd be like, it'd be packed, and they'd be like, man, we didn't make any money, man. It was the... I'm like, man, it's packed in here. And the waitress is telling me nobody was in here last week. <laughs> so fuck. In my mind, I was like, well, fuck it. You gotta, you gotta build your own shit and then do your own type of party. So we did the parties that we want to do, cause we smoke. We smoke. We, we cannabis enthusiasts. Smoke we're not potheads. We're not potheads. We're cannabis enthusiasts. Okay. So we're cannabis activists. So we we were throwing like a 420 friendly like kickback. A secret. We would throw like secret kickbacks, 
We'll, we'll drop the um, the ticket information, and we will have a location to the day of the show. Okay. And you pop up. We had black-owned vendors in there selling CBD, uh, CBD and sea moss and, like, clothes. And so we, we were kind of, like, leaning on building our own community okay. to help us sustain. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I, was, I was into that. That's what we're doing now. We did the first, like, drive-in during the pandemic. When the pandemic came. I that y'all did that. May 26th, we had a drive-in in Atlanta. And we were on the mic while the movie was playing, and you had the headphones. You could switch and listen to the movie or listen to us. Okay. So we then we started doing more every every week, every month. We I remember saying like a kickback until we got snitched on by the, somebody told the city on us or some shit. For real. But yeah, man, it's about we do a comedian around the joint, man. Don't look at this eye. Look at this eye. This. <laughs> <laughs> you can hit me up on Instagram at Ronnie Jordan, Twitter at Ronnie Jordan, Facebook comedian Ronnie Jordan, YouTube. I need y'all to subscribe. I need y'all to like, especially women. Go to like and subscribe. Sure I got a whole special, two specials up. They're like 14 minutes. I'm dropping new content all the time. I got my own show called A Rundown. More, uh, YouTube backslash Ronnie Jordan. I need y'all to like and subscribe. But the Blessed AF is my clothing line that yeah. I've been going crazy. Everybody been doing, in the store is the AF. I've been doing the Blessed AF since like 05. Yeah. But like, oh, oh. I think oh, maybe 09. But uh, my first hat I had this is I had blessed and I had the dollar signs in the blessed and the AF. But then I switched it to the to the arch. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've, I got them shirts. You've seen them on everybody. They, they come from like Anthony Anderson wear it. Uh, everybody. Say it wear it a lot. Say it wear my shit a lot. I appreciate them. And uh, but it's a lot of folks copying. But it's cool though. It's flattering. But Where can they get that at? Officialblessedaf.com. This is my newest installment. Uh, when, when the protest hit, I needed something to wear in the airport. Mm -hmm. So um, I just know we human. So I'm doing human AF with the black power fist on here, man. So, you know, I got some some human AF pieces coming. Um, and we have a new uh, service we use for our merch. Uh, all the More Than Coaching merch is going through Merch for Hire, M-E-R-C-H, the number four, H-I-G-H-E-R.com. Uh, -E Official Blessed AF and MerchForHire.com. Go support, man. I appreciate it. I got stickers, buttons. I got baby hoodies. I got these are the daddy hats. Daddy these, hats? These are, yeah, I call it. Well, well, my, my Blessed Day F hat has got the, it's got, it's like one of those navy hats with the gold on it, and it says Blessed Day F and gold. But this is yeah. my new, the new merch for more than, more than culture. But the the captain, the, the, the real trucker daddy hats, the real daddy hats is what I call the them. Cause, daddy hats. Because you know everybody back in the day, if your, your daddy had a Cadillac Step or something. Stepdaddy in my case. He used to wear them, these hats like this. And, and you know what I'm saying, riding mm -hmm. Cadillac, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so we brought them back. And they're going crazy right now. I'm, we selling out a lot of those hats. The, the, the black one with the gold is, is pretty much the, the sought after item. So okay. I appreciate it, man. Thank you for man. having me on, hey, your, brother, on your platform. Hey, brother, it's brother. a pleasure for me. This, this guy is clutch. To you have, understand? It's, a guy, it's a pleasure for me <laughs> to have somebody such as big as you, you know, literally, too. Yeah, li big as me, literally, just in space big and in circumference. The, in the in the comedy game, man, you just your energy, it, man. man. Just a really good dude, man. And uh, I just want to say, I, I watch. I know what's going on out here in the comedy game. Yeah, we man. just we just inspired by our actions, man. You can only do you can only do what you can do, and then people watching. So we can, inspired by each other, man. Yes, sir. So uh, y'all can go to uh, y'all get my merch. This is my new invention. Uh, I'm a pharmacy technician, so I learned a lot about a modern medication. I just applied that to herbs. Uh, this is my newest invention: sea moss and bladder rack tincture. Uh, sea moss contains 92 of 101 minerals that your body needs, and bladder rack contains the other nine. Uh, this soaked in 80 proof vodka for six weeks. And uh, you take it as a tincture. It boosts your immune system, aids in weight loss, and also good for your libido. I'm My son saying. over there, he got, they told him he had COVID a couple of weeks ago. I'm coming back from Carolina. His mama texted me. I said, how you doing, boy? He said, uh, I'm doing all right. Daddy, I'm going to need some of that sea moss and bladder rack. And they got him back? He got it. He was good in two or three days. Actually, I got... Comedian Ambrose.com, I got returning customers. Two of my customers said other members of their house caught COVID, and they the only ones that didn't. Because you got to understand, these two sea moss better that come out the ocean because they got plenty of minerals. And this boosts your immune system. Magnesium, That's iron, sulfur, you know, the shit that our body needs, man. Let me tell you something. On that sea moss, boy. Mm. It'll make you renew your vibes in that very and, and it's a tincture. Like I say, it's good for your libido. I'm going to tell you something, bud. So, <laughs> I'm going to tell you something. Look, 3811 for a show mask. Man, we got to bless you with one of these. Yes, sir. I'm going to wear this What tomorrow. you want? Go. Now, you say you you 3X, bro. Go. We got so look, the hoodies. So, he got a 3X Woo, for me. And then, so, now hood. I'm back on this. Show him what's on the back of I'm show back on my treadmill game. So, okay. I'm going to try to make myself. Show him what's on the back I'm going to make this a Gold's hoodie. Woo. Got the scan barcode at the ooh. Make sure that's a three S because I got large. In fact, you could. I got. If you want to send me a large that's for my hard. wife, 
This is a large. Okay. Can you mail me this? Because I have no room in no you bag. You can't take it home? I know you can squeeze that large in there. Man, you I, take I, a I got, I got one bag. And backpack. post it to me. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you yeah. mail it to me? I'll, I'll give, give you the money to mail it. A 3X. Yeah. And But, yes. But you can take. I can take the mail. We're going to sure. bless you with a 3811 for sure, man, and a two ounce of sea moss and bladder rack. I'm going to buy two more of these. For coming through, You brother. got the damn COVID cure over here. You Bruh, ain't telling nobody. I ain't taking no vaccine. Comedian, Amen. Ambrose, y'all make sure y'all hit that subscribe, subscribe will, button. Will we this got, make me turn into Buddy Love? Well. Like none of people do. <laughs> uh, if I get skinny tomorrow, not, not I'm going to come steal love, all this shit. But somebody else. Ambrose, if I get skinny tonight at the show, I'm coming to steal all this shit. Possibly. I don't know. Matter of fact, I'm going to take three of these. <laughs> Hey, man, I appreciate y'all. Subscribe. Make sure y'all support Ronnie Drone, Comedian Ambrose. Can I tell Jones. people, hey, man. Y'all got to support comedians. You got to go see them because they don't book us unless y'all come out and support Thank them. Thank you. Tell them again. If y'all support comedians and go see them and stuff, just like y'all support the people who you like on social media, tell people about them, man. Tell people about Ambrose's page. Repost them. Share it. Share it as much as you share somebody you don't even know. So, Shy, come say you know hey saying? real quick before the camera roll out. Go on, come in Look, and say what's up. Do your, does your dad embarrass you every show? <laughs> no, he. this is his first episode. He actually Oh, that's what's in. up, man. Come How old are you? Right here. How old are you? Yeah, you tall Don't as say what's up. up. You play ball? Nah, I do dance. So he just said up. you by me and he just told me you had COVID and, and brought you right over here. <laughs> he good now. Yeah, yeah, appreciate he it. He put the gang gang Love up. You. Right. Hey, man, appreciate That's it. That's what's up, man. Brother. Black fathers. Let me watch this. Get up by myself. Ah, <laughs> right. nigga been on the treadmill for two weeks. <laughs> there you go. That's Yo, progress. And if y'all, if you see any pussy print on me, that ain't my fault. It's, it's the seating arrangement. I'm a, I look nice standing up. I'm a Thanks. big... I'm a big standing up big nigga. I ain't no sitting down. <laughs> they had me in the goddamn chair on Bossom, nigga. I was like, can I please get the hot chair? I see y'all saw standing nigga, up. Nigga, I used to be, I used to be cussing them out. I'm like, I can't have no pussy print, nigga. My kids watching this shit. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I appreciate it.